Now to emphasize the sheer size of the Mississippi and the productivity it supports, consider this. Close to 280 million tons of goods, including more than half our grain exports, depart the mouth of the Mississippi on ships and barges each year. That's about a ton for every man, woman, and child in the U.S. We'll catch up with Jason Schultz again now, where the Heartland's harvests are heading for the world's dinner tables on the seaways of South Louisiana. There are quiet stretches of water in Louisiana's low-lying bayou country. The Mississippi is not one of them. This 54-mile stretch where the river meets the Gulf of Mexico is actually one of the world's busiest ports. From the Quad Cities, Mike Garner's corn has traveled 2,000 miles to this crossroads of global commerce. Above New Orleans, the grain travels on barges that carry more than 22,000 tons each, enough to fill 870 large semis. Here, those river barges share the water with giant cargo ships. The ships are carrying the Heartland's harvest to places like Istanbul, Hong Kong. We're the largest tonnage port in the Western Hemisphere. Over 60% of all the grain that is exported, will, going to all parts of the world, comes through this port. Joel Shason's agency manages this stretch of the Mississippi. When he joined me for a tour, he pointed out that around here, locks and dams aren't necessary. The river flows deep and wide enough in its final miles to float massive ships brimming with goods from the Heartland's farms. We're talking about soy, we're talking about corn, we're talking about animal food, we're talking about wheat. Of course, it's produced in the uh, Heartlands of America. You know, it comes down and uh, uh, it's shipped to all parts of the world. Every port in the world that, that basically can receive ships, we pretty much send grain now. The ships are larger and so are the grain terminals on this part of the Mississippi. They share riverfront real estate with chemical companies, industrial sites and oil distributors. Philip Kelly is superintendent of one of eight grain facilities here. This ADM plant can load ships at a rate of 1,000 bushels an hour. Loading this one will take more than two days. When it's done, it will carry 2.5 million bushels of corn overseas. Some of the biggest challenges we face, I guess, on a daily basis would be weather, uh, rain. Obviously, we can't load in the rain. Rain and grain don't really go well together at all. In 2005, 43 million tons of grain left this port. The top destination, Japan. Ultimately, that grain is used to feed livestock or be processed into food or other products. Some grain is loaded by crane. A barge ties up to a ship and a giant bucket moves it from one to the other. A symbol of the payoff for countless hours of planning and labor for the Heartland's farmers. It's, it's actually astonishing the, the jobs that this river provides and that that bushel of grain provides in terms of helping support America and, and, and moving the American farmer forward. A lot has changed since the days of Huck Finn and Tom Sawyer. 15 more be all in. Steel barges have replaced the wooden rafts. The communities that grew up with the steamboats have found new ways to grow. In Hannibal, it means celebrating the river's own poet, Mark Twain. On the Mississippi River Trail in Arkansas, it's folks reconnecting with the past, sensing the river's impact on people whose lives depend on it. Yeah, keep doing what you're doing, baby. For farmers like Mike Garner in Iowa, it's the crucial pathway from his farm to the rest of the world. And for Palmyra's Brent Hare, it's the source of rich soil for his corn, soybeans, and wheat. About 4.5 million gallons of water flow out of the Mississippi into the Gulf of Mexico every second. 3.9 trillion gallons a day. A better measurement of this river's majesty isn't gallons or seconds or days, but the millions of people around the world who don't even know it, but rely on this river for food every day. Well, we hope you've enjoyed this journey down the Mississippi on this special edition of America's Heartland, and we hope you'll come along with us again next time when we discover more great farms, families, and their fascinating stories in America's Heartland. I'm Paul Ryan, and I'll see you next time.